Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work with the first one. I'm going to make a copy of that. So in object mode, I click on it. I go Shift D and it will create a copy of it. As you can see, I can move it around. But if I press while it's there, Escape, it will place it exactly where the previous is the previous one is. So this copy, I'm going to hide it for the moment. And then I'm going to select the original one, not the copy, the original one, and I'm going to delete all the textures that it already has because we're going to rebuild them. How do I do that? Okay, there is two ways. You can come here, which is the material properties window and click here and deselect one by one but it's a very very long process now it's starting to delete one by one there are small bits here and here and here and it's going one by one you can use a script how do we use a script look at my mouse when i go to this corner it becomes a uh, cross i click on that corner and move the cross around i can open a second window and if i Press again in the corner and move it to the right. You see that arrow that appears. I release my key button, my mouse button, and it it uh, collapses the window. I can create as many windows as I want. I can create another one here if I want and do a third one, you see. But I don't want that many. I only need two. And in this second one, I'm going to come here and the type of edition, and I'm going to write text editor and can I can write a set of commands in order to remove all the things here all the all the textures I have already um, the command uh, written copy recorded whatever saved here script remove textures is what it says double click on it this is what you have to write I will leave it in the description of the video and you simply play press play it will take a second or two and it will remove all textures of your object you'll see in a minute so everything there will become white and all these materials here will disappear not supposed to be that big file but it's taking its time today for some reason sometimes the software crashes and but yeah that's why it's so many copies you see it has removed all the and this is blank now I'm going to do something I'm going to while being here go to the second one and do the same create a second copy hide it select this one and remove all the textures and hide it again and then do the same with the third one so this step is repeated for the three different levels of details sorry here create the copy hide a copy click on the previous one and remove okay so i have the three of them blank i don't need this script anymore and now i'm going to go back to the first one okay and we're going to carry on doing the next stage which is organizing its mapping okay we hide it this one this is the blank what is interested to us uh so i'm going to um I am going to save this stage just in case there is a, a problem. Fourth stage, and I'm going to save it. Okay, so now we have this copy with all the textures and this copy without any texture. So what the plan is I'm going to tell the computer, look at the colors in this model and try to match as close as possible how this is painted into one single file here. 
So what we have so far is a frame. Even if you see it white, this model has no textures. That's why he's painting them white. But it has a frame. It has, as you can see here in the edit mode, it has a, a 3D map of its points. And the software also has a 2D map of these same layers that is telling it how to paint this or where to paint this map as, as when you do a skin or whatever, it's the same thing. In order to access it, we can go here in the UV editor. And as you can see here in the UV editor, the map is really disorganized. It's all over the place. So we need to simplify it and how we do it. Okay, in order to simplify this map, with it highlighted, with all of it highlighted in edit mode and select all, okay, as it is, what we're going to do is we're going to um, go here, UB, which is this this map, this, sorry, um, this menu allow you to work with specific elements like, uh, and, and do different th things like go, where with vortex, where with edges, where with faces, they allow you to change views, to add elements to the to the scene, everything. And also working with this uh, with this frame, okay? Wireframe or whatever. So we're going to click here and we are going to tell them to smart UV project. What it's going to do is going to unwrap all the faces and redo it again in a more logical manner, but it takes time. Of all, if it is a big map, so I'm going to do it. Um, I'm not going to to pause the video, so you will see how more or less takes for eighty three thousand vortex. So I'll do it. Touch nothing. Yes. Okay. It's not going to give you any message, but you will see that the mouse now cannot do anything. If I click, is this round going around and i'm going to wait at least one minute and when you will see that it's not ending the process i'm going to stop the video and i will resume the video when it's finished i will to more or less check how long it take and i will tell you later on how long it took um with big big uh, maps sometimes it can take up to 10 to 20 minutes um yesterday i don't know for one for which trade reason doing uh, it's a very similar size of this one took me like just a couple of minutes. I don't know. I don't know to be honest how to calculate this, but sometimes it takes longer and the other times with the same type of files. Okay, I'm going to stop the video because I, it seems to me it's taking time. As you can see, there is no bar of process of anything. So uh, normally what I do is I click on it and I go to have a coffee or something. And when I return, it will finish. This is the, the most detail of the three maps, okay? The other two will be much, much faster. Usually when you work with the big ones is when it takes more time, okay? So as you can see, you can here have the information, 83,000 vortex and 236,000 edges, 148 uh, faces, okay? So it's taking some time. I'm going to stop the video, stop the recording, and I will resume when it's finished. Okay, as you can see now, it's much clearer, it's finished. It took me like five minutes. Okay, let's do the same thing with the next one. So we close it, we open it, we hide this one. Okay, we go back to this one, click here, select edit mode, and you will see that the map is very disorganized as well. Okay, and we do the same. UB, small UB project. Okay, and it's going to organize this one as well. This one is going to take a bit less time because now it's, it, this is like one quarter of the other one. So if the first one took me like five minutes, the, this one will take me one minute, okay? Uh, I'm going to stop the recording because even if it is a minute, it's a minute. And I will resume when it's finished. It was, I, I click it and it was already ended. Okay, so you see it's much better organized. Very good. So now we hide it and we open the last one. We hide this one, click here, go 
or edit mode do that because otherwise it, it will not load the new one just in case select all you have it disorganized uv small uv project okay this one is quicker it's very quick you see and it has organized it in a better way so now we have all the frame uh, the the white frame the the uv mesh uh organize we're going to work with the first one with this one uh we're going to save file save us near my fifth stage okay it's not necessary to to do all these copies but i will prefer to do them just in case i've been i have a lot of problems i'm going this very slowly i don't want to rush things and um, okay we still hide this one we are working with the white one and the next thing we are going to do is i'm i'm going to convert or transfer the colors from this one into this one and as i said before i have removed the 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 textures for this one it has a lot of them exactly like the copy obviously but uh, it has a lot of them but now it has none okay as you can see we don't need this uh, edition mode anymore we are going to go to the one which is called shadow edition because we're going to edit now the textures okay it's a blank page right now because there is none texture associated to this file so the first thing we're going to do is create a new one. You can create it clicking here or here. It doesn't matter. And it creates this settings that is going to tell the computer how are they going to blend that scheme, that file. OK, but we don't have the file yet. We only have the connection, the connection um, interface. So we're going to create the first, we're going to create a blank texture now that is the one we're going to paint into. Let's put it that way. So for that, we're going to add a texture image. So create a new one. We're going to call it Niemeyer Lord 00. This is the, the one who has the biggest amount of information. And remember, it has always to be base two and a square. So I'm going to upgrade it. I mean, to put it, to record it or create it with uh, 20, um, 48 pixels. Remember, always a square, always base two. It can be as big as you want, but always a square and always base two. So it means it, you can do 4K, like will be um, 4096. It could be 2048 it could be 1024 512 uh, and i even use sometimes see if it is a very small object 256 it will create smaller files easier for the computer to process okay 2048 the alpha needs to be selected so whatever has no color will be left blank and not black and um, we click OK. And now we have this blank layout, which we're going to transfer the color of the previous one. And how do we do that? In order to do that, we use a process called baking, and we are going to use the render properties of the, of the program that is allowed to render, which to be honest, I'm not an expert. I don't know what it means, but this is how it works. You have three different render engines. The AEV that we're going to use it later to see things like lights and everything is the most basic one. But now we're going to use the cycles, which is the most powerful one. Um, we keep this. We don't want the experimental. Uh, the device we're going to use, you can select the GPU or the GPU, the CPU. In my case, because I have a good computer, I'm going to use the CPU. Uh, the GPU also works, but it works longer. Um, I, in my texting, it took longer to use the GPU. 
that so I use the CPU and it works perfectly in both cases. Some people have reported that they have problems using the CPU and they only use the GPU. You can use either. Do a couple of tests and see which of the two works better. And then the other thing we need to transform is this. In the bake, how we're going to transfer the color, we're going to do it diffuse and we're going to des deselect direct and indirect because we only are interested in the color. We are going to select to active because that's what we're going to do. I can de-highlight this, click on it, and then with control click on the one we want the colors to be transferred to. Then the ray distance is going to be 0 0.1 meters and the margin 1 pixel. So once we do that, we can just simply click in bake. And there is going to be this time, yes, there is a line that moves. It's going to tell us how long will it take. It may take some time, but at least now we have a bar that is telling us how the process is going. As you can see, it's not that timing like the other thing, the organizing the frame and everything. So we have done already 24%. I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Okay, if one, once it's done, finish. Look what it says here. Well, you didn't see it, but uh, the, the baking has been done internally. We're going to save it. So don't forget this step because it's important. We're going to save it. So what we do is going to link here with this line, the color to the base, okay? You can highlight, I mean, hide this one, and you see the color has been transferred from this original file to this one. Okay, so this one can be already deleted, and we are going to stay on this one. If we go to the uh, properties, you will see that it has only one file, only one file, material 0.1 which all the colors and everything. Um, if you look at the image, actually it's a bit too white. Uh, this will be the proper ending one, but it doesn't matter now because we're going to do a lot of changes still. This is how it's going to look at the end. We're going to look at different things first. And before we, um, I, and we, I'm going to repeat the process with the other two files, so you don't have to, to see them. So I'm going to do it quickly. I will stop the video and I'll resume when I finish doing. But it's the same exact process in the plus one and the plus two. One thing though that we have to do first is go back to the UV editor, select here edit mode, and you see now that we have created an image that it wasn't there before and we have to save it here what it says image is this asterisk that it usually means that changes have been done and have not been uh, saved and normally that's what it says in in any software so we click here we save us try to save it in the same area because we're going to work with it later and it already gives you a name Niemeyer LOD 00 PNG this is the same exact file that is going to be used as a texture later on in the simulator and because we're going to modify it ex externally we're going to save it here so Blender always will use that copy and we can modify externally okay this is a very important step that if you forget it's going to is difficult to go back so remember to save every time you do a um, you create a new texture, save it. Okay, so now we can hide this one and we are going to do the same with this second load and then with the third one. I will stop the video because it's the same process repeated and it's no point of doing it again in the video. I'll see you in a minute. Uh, one quick thing, when I'm doing the number two, I call it Niemeyer yeah, load 01 and the size this time, remember the first one was 2048, this one is going to be 1024 and the last one is going to be Niemeyer yeah, load 02 obviously and the size is going to be 512. I just wanted to make this point because maybe if you're following the process you were unsure 
it to keep the same sizes or to remove them, sorry, to reduce them. So what I do is the biggest one in this type of uh, size, okay, is 2K, the second is 1K and the smaller one is half K. And don't forget that the key for linking the two of them, once you open them, is the control key, not the, the shift key, not the, and also uh, all the, all if you do it one after, I mean, the all the information here on the baking menu is going to be kept. So you don't have to actually reset the process, you see, it's already done. So I link them, click, so it go faster than the first time. Okay, so we have finished already with this stage. As you can see, we have, uh, let me hide the ones that are not. So we have the most. The most uh, detailed one. We have the previous one, the, sorry, the next one with a bit more detail. Less detail, sorry. And the last one with very few details. Okay. And that's the three different files already done. And also we have a file called here in projects, projectors. Aviles, Niemeyer, we have the three lots in a PNG form. Okay, so the next step now is going to take us out of the blender. I'm going to start working with the uh, with the um, Photoshop. I'll see you in a minute. Before we carry on, I want to also mention that the it may happen, not always, it, it, it is more noticeable in this type of uh, very white, uh, flat or or sometimes curved areas that so, the, there are some cracks that they were not in the original file. This is because when we do the, uh, the UV, when we uh, rearrange the mesh, uh, obviously the, it does it automatically, so some mistakes are done. Um, it's a compromise. We can try to minimize the effect. This is nothing to do with the with the texture. It's to do with the mesh. Okay. For example, this crack, which is very noticeable here. Sorry, let me go and focus into it. If there is anything very obvious like this one, we can try to fix it or minimize it at some extent. If you have the time and the patience, as you can see, you can see through it. And if we look at it from the, I'm going to remove the X-rays so we can pinpoint the exact, is this particular point here, we can move it. The blue is to go down and close the gap. Okay. And if we go back to um, object mode, you will see that now have fixed that crack. Okay. In this particular case, there are a few of them. We can spend some time fill, uh, fixing them or trying to fix them at some extent. I fix that one and maybe I will fix a couple more. But uh, and I only will do it in when you get close to the thing because once in the simulator it won't be that noticeable. Okay, I'm going to try to fix a couple, and I see you in a minute. Oh, before I begin, one thing you can do is just create a copy of it. Um, just copy and paste in the same place or outside if you want you hide the copy if you want to use it later okay and if anything goes wrong and you can don't want to go back you just delete that one and rename this one okay i'm, I'm going to see you in a minute sometimes you can merge to vo vortex as i just done okay here so it, there was a small gap, so I selected two, right click and merge the vortex. Uh, as you can see, and I'm doing it, see there are, are I'm removing all these gaps. 
and some there are still some things going on give you another example of what is possible to be done for example this white thing here that depending on the you can see it is because there is like a gap so if we go to edit mode you see there is three vortex here we can merge them okay and now object mode there is no gap you see so you can clean up a little it will depend on the technique you are going to use but as i said normally this thing is not needed only when there is this clear surface that can be problematic that can have these breaks that is a very smooth and in the process of cleaning it can bring problems okay let's do another one in edit mode you see here there is a triangle it has three so we can merge this this is or we can merge I don't know if there is anyone below that is giving the problem. It's a few. Let me turn it around so I can. look it clearly what the problem is sometimes it's not possible to fix or it requires i mean these two for example are very obvious let me okay these two Opa. can we close them like this and this one close the gap like this careful with the axis because moving items sometimes is difficult match the two of them these shadows is because there are maybe a, a, there is one um icon below the the vortex below sorry that we're not seeing but sometimes it's very difficult because the net is quite big okay if you are very good at this it will be possible also to cut completely the sphere and redo it through using add and a, a circle okay or a UV sphere here and then project again the texture because as I said the, te the texture is not the one giving the shadows but my knowledge of um, of how to do this is limited so I can fix a few gaps a few big ones with a lot of care and that's it but you see the result is quite good so far okay Let's then go back to uh, to Photoshop and keep working with this. Oh, sorry again. Before going again, look at this uh, area here. This is supposed to be like a, a restaurant. I don't know because I've never been into the center myself, but this could be a restaurant or... So this place can be illuminated at night. And this is definitely an area that these are windows and that windows can be illuminated at night as well okay so we're going to look to try to find these things to illuminate them and give them night textures also this i'm supposed is supposed to be like a, i guess it's a corridor that goes from one area to another and we're going to give them lights for example here and here they look like two posts or here on top we're going to give them lights to make them illuminate there is one here and then one here we're going to do that at the end it's the last thing we're going to do but just to be aware of looking for these textures on the file to give them some window lights so now we are in photoshop and I'm, i have to apologize in advance because my uh, photoshop is in spanish uh, i checked if i could uh, change it into english and i can't so well never mind I'm going to tell you what to do because it's very simple what we are doing. The first thing I'm going to do is and open the LOD00. It's the PNG we created in the previous steps. And this is the 
file that has all the colors that have been have been applied in our model. Um, I think uh, we made a kind of I'm speaking by heart now. It's is two k, it's two twenty thousand pixels, and you can see all the images here. So um, you can recognize some, for example, the, the those uh, ship here, some cars. Um, I'm going to going we are going to do a very small quick thing first, which is going to be to transform the colors because at this moment it has a very bluish area. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this uh, layer. So if I have a problem, I don't have to. Uh, as always, I I always come come back and I protect it and hide it because I'm not going to work with it. This is going to be the base. The base color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply select it. And in the image, I go to uh, to adjustments. And I look for this, Control B, which in Spanish is Equilibrio de Color. I think, I don't know how it's in English, to be honest, I can't remember. I have another version of Photoshop in another computer. And we apply to the blue area, which is the third one, minus 15 in the three of them. In the median, in the shadows, minus 15. And in the illuminations, minus 15. We press OK. And we have this change, which the first thought is, is a bit greenish, but that's it. That's as that's the only thing we need to do. And we now can save it. I, I normally save a copy of uh, in Photoshop because this one with this file we're going to also do the night textures. So I save it. And then we open the other two and do the same. So image adjustments. Okay, just simply just copy. Okay. PNG. Okay. So we transform the three of them. This one doesn't need to have a copy in PSD because we're not going to reuse it for anything. this one actually we can work directly into it because it's very straightforward anyway oh shit you see mistakes can happen Okay. PNG. So we have created three copies. I think the first one I didn't create the PNG, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to open it now again. So we have transformed the, the three of them and I'm going to open again the first one, the one in which I have all the base, this one, the PSD. I think I didn't copy, uh, I didn't save it as, as PNG as well. 
I'll do it now. And I'm going to create from here the night texture for the three of the of the LODs. Okay, I'm going to start with this one. And in order to create a night shade, okay, how the night shade works. Later on, we're going to tell the system that we are going to have an emissive layer. An emissive layer tells the software the amount of light that is going to reflect. So black will be no reflection and white will be maximum reflection. Well, reflection or emit actually, not ref So black will be no light emitted and any color will emit a light in that color. The light is not going to be very intense. We're going to regulate it. But at least here, we're going to tell which color the light is going to be emitting. So it can be white, it can be red, it can be any color. And it's going to emit a glow, a light from that color. As I said before, black is zero and white is white light. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create here uh, another layer of black color because by default the light is going to emit is no light and I'm going to hide this this uh, layer for the moment because what I'm going to do is identify what areas I want when the night comes that emit light is very uh, simple to do it's a very simple procedure when you do it with um, with a layer that has uh, houses. I'll show you one up, but look here. Remember those areas we saw before? I can realize that here there is some windows from that area I said before. So I'm going to give some light there. You can illuminate the whole thing if you want here as well and here as well, here and here, or you can just give some lights. It will depend what you want. I'm going to try to give light to everything, but it's, sometimes it's difficult because in these areas with little things, part of the lights, I mean, part of the textures can be there. So that will not be illuminated because it is impossible to identify. So I'm going to pretend some areas are more dark than others and everything. I'll show you in a minute. You see what I mean? I'm going to create another layer so I don't paint on any one, any other one. And I protect all of them. This is this is hide at the moment, so I cannot paint. And I can select white color and yellow color. This yellow is too bright. Let's get to um, it's too yellow. Let's get a more whitey. This one is better. Okay. And I'm going to select the layer I want to work with. And with the B, or I get the. Can create an angle if you need to paint sideways or whatever and I'm going to paint for example here a light I'm going to illuminate these three areas I'm going to paint here as well Then, if you made a mistake, you can always delete because we are working in that layer only. You don't delete anything else. Okay. You can create different, you can use different size sizes to be more accurate in your coloring. Oh, this is the eraser, not the. Okay, I'm going to do less actually. Okay.
place another one here. We'll move it to the second screen so I can see clearly what I'm doing. Okay, I want to identify here there is more. As you see here, I'm not sure if this or this is. Sometimes it's tricky to see. I'm going to show you now how I have done it, for example, in an area that is there have houses. So how differ different is. This can be can have some light as well, that area. But you see there is bits that are not shown here that are probably mixed here. So it's better to be sure what you're doing. And I'm not going to use any, but here, for example, we can use a bit of yellowy light. And here as well, a bit of yellowy light. And then you can correct and change it if you want. We're going to save it in a Photoshop file. Okay, that's it. It doesn't need more. So you see that we have created just a few spots of light. Okay, I'm going to show you another one. I'm going to save it this first. First to save, and now I'm going to save it as a PNG, but I'm going to call it Niemeyer Night. And it's not check. LOD00, I'll save it. Okay, I'm going to show you, for example, how I did it for another area. So let me go to another project I got. And for example, in the in this area, there are a lot of lights. Okay, let me let's open this file, and you see you have a lot of different lights. And if I unhide it, you see what I'm doing is I'm highlighted some windows. You see there the windows. So that's what I'm doing. It's finding the windows in the LOD of the homes, of the houses, and highlight the, the colors. You can sometimes give one blue or one red. It's not common, but and you don't have to do all in all of them. For example, in this building, only two lights, okay? That's an example. So now that we have created the, the night texture for the LOD and corrected everything, go back to Blender. 